Um, today we'll talk about how to motivate people with God's grace. How to motivate people to do different things with God's grace. Motivate people to love God, to pray, to read the Bible, and to obey God. Um, the reason is, you know, very often people just use the law to motivate people. Just tell people what to do. Now, from the Bible, whenever, uh, when Jesus, when God tells us what to do, He give us, they give us uh, different reasons. They give us the motivation that how uh, God is pleased with us when we obey Him. How God is happy when we obey Him and how He will bless us. So God does use uh, grace, His grace, to motivate us to obey Him. So, so then we understand this and then we will, um, when we teach and obey, uh, you know, encourage people to obey God, we don't just tell people what to do, but we tell people that when they obey God, when they follow God, then God will bless them, God is happy with them, and also God will give them the strength to obey Him. Okay? Okay, um, we should be motivated by God's grace to obey Him. First, motivation by God's grace to obey God gives us joy, strength, and a fruitful life. That uh, His grace will give us joy. You know, God is happy that I obey Him. Even when I give a cup of cold water to a little one, God is happy. And that's why uh, Jesus said things like this, that when you give a cup of cold water, to a little one, by no means you lose the reward because Jesus is motivating us with His, uh, his reward and also He's pleased with us. So that gives us joy. We know that we are uh, doing something that God is happy with. And then also that, uh, that makes us happy also that when we, uh, that when we uh, obey God, we know that God is happy because He said that He will reward us. That means He's happy with us. Okay, and then uh, the second point, main motivation by the law gives us pressure and fear. The law should give us reminder and warning and should not be the mo main motivation. Okay, now, um, now in the world, people are used to giving motivation by the law. You know, like uh, it's, you can see that in the daily life, people will say, if you don't do this, I will punish you, I'll beat you, I, will, I won't give you food if you don't obey me, uh, or they just show a uh, unhappy face when people don't obey him. So this is motivation by the law, it's just telling people, you have to obey me, you have to obey me. Okay, so now, now the Bible does give us reminder of the law, you know, if we disobey him, the Bible tells us that, you know, there is warning. But this should not be the main motivation. Now, if people take the law to be the motivation, uh, this is how they would be. You know, that they would say, oh, I have to obey. If not, God will punish me. Uh, if, you know, that people should not be, you know, if they are mature Christian, they should not be saying, oh, if I disobey Him, God is going to punish me and, and I might, you know, lose salvation and... Uh, God is unhappy with me. So the main motivation should not be, oh, if I disobey, God is unhappy. That way, they, they're not living like a son of God. They're living like a slave. It's like, you know, you must obey. If not, the punishment will come. Now, even though, now, it could be true in some sense. You know, God doesn't always punish us immediately. But when we sin, we do give the devil a foothold. Uh, for the attack to steal, kill, and destroy uh, our life. But, you know, God doesn't just, you know, say, okay, you disobey now, I'm going to punish you immediately. Now, sometimes He, he can do that, but He doesn't do that all the time. And uh, the main thing is, He's motivating, by, uh, motivating us by His grace, that uh, when you obey, I'm very happy, I'm with you, I'm the one who gives you strength, I'm the one who gives you the 
uh, the spiritual gifts so that you can serve me and I would move you by the Holy Spirit. I will give you wisdom to do it. I will guide you to do it. So these are all grace, His, uh, His wonderful uh, work in our life, His gifts to us, His blessings to us, to motivate us to obey Him. Now, the law should be a reminder, like if I'm lukewarm, then Jesus wants to spit us out from, the, from His mouth. And uh, if we don't bear fruit, the branches could be cut off. But it should not be the main motivation because when we understand God is so full of blessings, God is full of mercy and kindness, and He has all kinds of blessings He wants to give us. So therefore, we should be saying, if I obey Him, He is very happy, and uh, so I, I want to obey Him. And that should be the main motivation. It's like a child, uh, when he, he has a good relationship with the parents, he will say, well, when I do these things and when I obey Him, He will be very happy. My father will be very happy and He will reward me. Uh, and he, he, you know, he will smile when He sees me. That should be the main motivation. Now, if a child says, oh, if I don't do my homework today, he'll punish me, he'll yell at me, he'll beat me, then that means the relationship with the Father is not so good. So, our main motivation should be from God's grace and His nature also. His nature means His quality, His inner quality, His love, His kindness, His goodness, His almighty power, all these are His, his nature. Uh, but very often, Christians grow up uh, under the law because they, they always grow up under the law and, and people tell them you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to obey, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, when they grow up, they say, you know, you have to uh, cook the food, you have to uh, work on a field, you have to uh, clean up uh, the house, you have to do all this. So uh, in daily life, very often, People are commanded to do things. They are forced to do things. So they think that when they believe in Jesus, it's, it's also like that. Now actually, in a healthy family, in a healthy family, when there is a good relationship between the parents and the, ch and the children, the children should be happy to obey the parents. Of course, the parents should also teach them to obey and and then motivate them by saying, you know, if you do this, if you study well, one day you'll become a, you know, you'll be, a, uh, you'll be able to uh, find a good job and your life will be better. You can do greater things for God. Uh, and uh, also when you learn to obey us in a family, uh, then you, uh, you learn to be an obedient child and one day you have obedient children yourself and you will you know, have a good family yourself. So then the children are happy to do things. And they, they're happy and they say that if my, I obey my parents, they, uh, they are very happy. So that should be the main motivation. But because many Christians grew up under the law, they always forced to do things. So when some preachers preach, they, they use the law more than the, the grace of God. Now, if you read the Bible, you notice that God's warning is generally given to disobedient people and also given to uh, the Pharisees and the scribes because they rejected Christ. And so Christ's warning is to the Pharisees and the scribes and the priests, not to the Christians. Now, the Christian, he does give warning, but most of the time he encouraged them that, you know, uh, when you abide in me, I'll abide in you and you bear much fruit. And uh, when you do even give a cup of cold water, I will, uh, you will by no means lose your reward. So we notice that Jesus uses grace to motivate uh, his people. And also, uh, even in the Old Testament, now there is a lot of warning, but still God tells them, you know, turn to me and you'll find life, that in me there is life. And also, my, uh, my will for you is to bless you, to, uh, to do wonderful things in your life, you know. And David really has this confidence. He said, 
all the days of my life have been written in your book before one of them came to be. And your will to, toward me, your thoughts toward me is always good. So Paul, uh, David al already saw the goodness of God. So we see that both in the Old Testament and New Testament, the grace of God is the main motivation, His nature and His grace. His nature means His inequality and His grace uh, are, are His main motivation. And the law should be a secondary reminder to tell people that if they disobey God, there could be discipline and there could be punishment and also they give the devil a foothold. And, uh, and the third point here is living in God's grace does not mean we can sin freely. Like for instance, for myself, I don't sin freely. I actually, I'm very careful not to sin at all. I'm very careful. If I have any sinful thoughts, I'll stop it right away because I know that sins are destructive. I know that God the Father has so many blessings planned for me. He has a wonderful plan uh, made for me. And I, when I love Him and when I have a close relationship with, with Him, when I obey Him, He is very, very happy. So I'm happy I have God. And I'm happy to obey Him. I'm happy to serve Him. I'm happy to glorify Him. So I'm motivated by grace. It doesn't mean that People motivated by God's grace is they are lazy and they have uh, low motivation. They don't want to serve God. They just don't want to do anything for God, you know, because some people think you have to beat people before they will obey. Now, this is, you know, it's like treating people like they are slaves. Now, that is not how God works. God doesn't want to treat us like slaves. He said, uh, you have the spirit of a son, not of a slave. That so uh, when we have God's grace, we know His plan is so wonderful. He has planned so many good things in my life. So I theref therefore, I never want to lose His blessings. I want to live in His blessings. I want to be blessed by God all the time. That way, you know, that, you know, I want to go to the highest point of my life, to go to the center of His will. That way, you know, I'm highly motivated. Now, I do remind myself of the reminder of the law, but, uh, you know, I will tell myself if I have any sinful thought, any kind of lust, any kind of greed or, or frustration with people, this can bring destruction. So I have this reminder, but it's not my main motivation. And when, I, when we grow more in Christ, actually we don't need much of this warning and reminder. And so it affects how we preach. Now, some people preach is saying, you have to do this. Now, this is like telling a slave. It's, this is a law, a law statement. Instead of saying, you have to do this, instead we can say this. When you, you use the word when, when you obey God, God is very happy and He will reward you right away. And he, it's Him who gives you strength. He gives you strength. He gives you uh, spiritual gifts. He gives you an opportunity to serve Him. And then whenever you serve Him, God is very happy. Now, this is how I motivate people. And then when people hear this, they are happy to serve God. They're happy, you know. Tomorrow, actually, I'm go, I will go on a mission trip, a short mission trip, one day mission trip. And there are some people who want to go with me because they, they see that opportunity to serve God and see the work of the Holy Spirit. They are happy. When people are motivated by God's grace, they are happy to to have a close relationship with God and happy to serve God. So when we preach, pay attention not to say, you have to, you have to, you have to. If I use an illustration, you should not be telling your wife, you have to cook for me. You have to do this, clean the, clean the house, clean the clothes for me. You know, we should not be uh, saying, uh, should not say things like this. We should say instead, oh, when you cook for me, I'm so happy. I'm so happy you do everything for me. I'm very happy. I feel, uh, you know, I'm very fortunate. I'm very blessed to have you. Now that way, it will motivate a wife to be, to be good to us. And my wife, I, I'm, I love my wife and my wife loves me. And she willingly, gladly do things for me. And I gladly do things for her to make her happy. I'm very, very happy to do that. So that should be the relationship with God. So as preachers, please pay attention 
not just, you know, we should not actually we avoid using expression like you have to, you must. But instead we say, when you do this, God is very happy. Use the word when. When you do this, God is very happy. When you pray to God, actually it's God who draws you to come to Him. When you pray to God, God is very happy. For sure He will listen to you. He will be smiling at you and He will be blessing you when you pray to Him. So He is happy to see you pray to Him. That way people are motivated. And then some people say, well, if you tell them you just give a cup of cold water and then God is very happy, then they will say, okay, I just give a cup of cold water and I stop there. But I would say when well, they understand that, you know, cup of cold water is just the beginning, but when we do greater things for God, then God is happier and God will use us mightily and God will raise us up to a high level. Do you want to go into the high level of God's plan, almighty God's plan? When you enter that plan, your whole life is, is blessed. So when we motivate people and say, you know, you give a cup of cold water, you'll be blessed. It doesn't mean they will stop there. And we tell them, any good thing, any little thing you do for Him, He's very happy. So whenever we can, we want to bless people, we want to help people, we want to do things to bless people. Like now, I don't have to do all these teachings. You know, I can just relax myself and have fun every day. But I'd rather have the joy of serving God, to, you know, to spend hours to do teaching and preparation I'd rather do this because I know God is very happy and my life will go to a higher level and I can bless more people. I'm happy because of that. I don't have to be forced to do things. So I hope we all understand that and we ourselves motivate ourselves like that. We motivate ourselves with God's grace and His nature and we motivate the people like that and tell them, well, when you do these things for God, God is very happy and God will for sure bless you and God will for sure reward you and He will bless your whole life. So I hope we all are motivated by God's grace and we motivate people with God's grace, okay? Now the first part, how to move, motivate people to love God and to delight in God, to be happy about God. The Bible does promise that when we delight in Him, then you know He'll give us the desires of our heart and also He'll raise us up to a high level. Okay, mot uh, motivate people to love God and to pray. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the hearts of men the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. Now, when we look at any passage, I hope you look at God's nature and His grace. And then when we preach about a certain passage, I hope we all preach on God's nature and His grace and tell people how wonderful God's nature is, how wonderful His grace is. Now here it says that, that for those who love Him, God will prepare for things that we can never imagine, that has never entered into the heart of man. We can never imagine how great the blessings of God that He has planned for us. So what are the nature of God and His grace uh, from this passage? Now you have to use imagination to, to think about for God to be able to prepare for us things we never imagined. So what nature does He have to have? He has to have the nature of being generous. And He has all the resource. First, He has all the resource. Everything in the world belongs to Him. He has everything in the whole world, first. And second, He is generous. He is happy to give to us. And He is also creative. In the whole world, he creates many kind of birds with many, you know, different colors, very beautiful colors. He creates people, you know, with creativity, with wisdom, with intelligence. And he himself has intelligence and creativity. That is why he can prepare for things we can never imagine. His creativity is much stronger than our creativity. And his ability to create things is much better than uh, our ability. For instance, in my life, after I really want to serve God and, and, and uh, love Him and obey Him and glorify Him, <clears throat> I find that God has given me many, many gifts. He gave me the opportunity to study a lot and to learn the distinction between uh, God's grace and God's law to understand all the truth 
Excuse me. So, um, Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm just going to turn this off. Okay. Um, so, you know, he has given me an opportunity to learn many things. And he has given me the wisdom to learn all different things and given me the opportunities to serve him and uh, give me the provision. Now, even though in the process I did face difficulties, you know, that after I experienced the Holy Spirit, I find that it's not easy to find a church to, uh, you know, at that time, at that time I could not find a church where I can find ministry. And so eventually I built my, my church. And uh, in the process, I did not have the income immediately. But then God continued to provide for me step by step. So even though I went through difficult times, uh, I still continue to trust in Him. I still continue to, you know, I still continue to praise Him I, because I always believe in God. I, I, I'm always happy with God. So I, even in a difficult time, I still trust in Jesus. I still praise Him. And I saw God's grace in every area of my life. And He has given me many spiritual gifts in music, in teaching, in training, in, uh, also in organization, in uh, different ways that God has uh, provided for me and given me. He has given me a wonderful wife and He has given me a group of wonderful people to work with me and to build up this Global Fire Mich Missions Ministries and to provide for for us so that we can support many African pastors and also uh, different pastors of different places. So God is really preparing things I never imagined. I never imagined that I have a mission organization. I never imagined that I could go to 15 different countries to do mission work. So that's God's provision. He's gracious. So He prepared wonderful things for us. So when we preach, we want to tell people how wonderful God is, to think about all the different things God has you know, done in our life, how wonderful He is, so that people are impressed with the goodness of God. And then they are happy with God. And then they want to serve God. They want to obey God. So that's how we motivate people to love God. So here, that, here I've written down some uh, motivation with God's grace. God treasures those who love Him. Those who love Him, He treasures us. When we sincerely love God, He will prepare for us things we cannot imagine with His creativity. He has this creativity. And God is generous. He wants to uh, prepare the, the best for us. And He is also almighty. And He owns everything. Everything is in His hand. So He is able to give us everything. He can work in our heart. He can give us thoughts. He can give us wisdom in, uh, to the inside of us, that we have wisdom inside of us. So that's, that's God's grace, that He has the ability, He has the ability to work in our mind, in our spirit, so that we have wisdom. So in our prayer, it's more important to love God than to ask for blessings. So for myself, I don't ask for blessings much because God knows already. I do ask for blessings, but I, you know, I just make it short. I spend more time loving God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You're so wonderful. I love you. I like you. I spend more time loving Him. And because God has promised that when you love Him, He'll prepare for you things that human mind cannot think of. So I spend more time praising God and loving God instead of I spend more time loving God rather than uh, asking for things. There are many people who ask me, oh, uh, what can, you know, what, uh, how can we pray so that uh, my children will get these blessings, so that my children would uh, be healed? You know, I said it's most important that you love God and you have a close relationship with God and you help your children to have a good relationship with God because God's promises are mainly to the Christians. 
and to those who love him. So when your children love him, then he will bless your children. That you know, some people think that intercession is the main way to get blessings, but actually the Bible says the main way to get blessings is to love God, to have a good relationship with God and trust in His goodness and love Him all the time. So there are some Christians, to, you know, to ask me,、uh, can you pray for my children to be、uh, to to be healed? I ask them, is your children are your children Christians? They said no. I said, why don't you first ask for them to be safe? Pray that God moves in the heart so they can be they can be safe. And also, when you have the grace of God filling you, when people live in God's grace, then you will,、uh, you know, then your children can see God's grace in you and see God's joy in you, and then they will be attracted by that joy, your joy to believe in Jesus. But if you are living with the law, Then they don't like that. But if you're living, you know, with the joy of the Lord, that you are confident in God's love, then they see that and they they are attracted to believe in God. And then we tell them, when you love God, God will bless you. That way, it's more sure that He will get blessings. Now, of course, we do pray for people, but we understand that actually the emphasis of the intercession. First, Jesus said, pray that. God will send more workers out. So that's the first emphasis of intercession, to pray for the Christians so that they become strong. They have the motivation to go to serve God. That God will move them to serve God. So that's the main, the first and main、uh, thing we pray for: for Christians to be strong, for the church to be strong, to send our workers to serve Him. And also we pray for people so that you know、uh, that we have. A peaceful time to preach the gospel.、Uh, pray for Christians to be strong and peaceful time to preach the gospel.、Uh, instead of just praying for health, now we can pray for health. But the main thing is that when we love God, God will bless our health and bless our、uh, everything. So I hope that we understand this and don't think that you know intercession is the solution to your problems. Intercession is not the solution to problem. Intercession is just one way people can get blessed, but the main way is that they need to believe in Jesus and then have you know trust in Jesus and love Jesus and then they'll have、uh, salvation and also they'll have the blessings of God when they love God. So in our Christian life, I hope we all say, God is so good. God has so many blessings. God is blessing me. God is moving in my heart. The Holy Spirit is moving in my heart. Therefore, I want to love Him. I want to obey Him. I want to glorify Him. God is wonderful. If we live like that, then God is very happy with us, and He will bless our life. So I hope that the way you pray for blessings for Africa is that you build up more people that they love God, they have confidence in God, they they want to follow God, and then、uh, and the church pray together to love God, to worship God, to adore God. To glorify God instead of to glorify people, to ask for just healing, to just ask for miracles, we should just you know love God and then love and then God will bless us with miracles. So in our prayer, it's more important to love God than to ask for blessings, and this gives us motivation to spend more time loving Him in our prayers. So this is how we motivate people to to love God and to pray. Okay, so I hope we all. Are motivated to love God and say God is so good, God is worthy to be worshipped, to be loved. God is so wonderful. He is the best in my life. Therefore, I want to love Him.